Welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Robert Whitaker. Today, we're going to troubleshoot a networking issue using the ACI eLAM Assistant. So in case you're not familiar with ACI, ACI stands for Application Centric Infrastructure. And there are two main components that make up ACI. So simply put, an APIC plus Nexus 9000 switches equals ACI. So let's focus a little bit more on the APIC. So the APIC stands for Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. And to configure, manage, and troubleshoot your Nexus 9000 switches, you go to one place, the APIC. So to work with ACI, I go to my web browser, I type in the IP or the host name of the APIC. I log in. And here we go, here is the APIC GUI. And notice down here, there are three Nexus 9K switches the APIC is currently managing. Next, let's talk about an ACI troubleshooting tool called the ELAM. So the ELAM stands for Embedded Logic Analyzer Module. And the way it works is every Nexus 9000 switch comes with a packet capturing tool called the ELAM. So using the ELAM, you can see if a switch drops or forwards traffic. So all in all, the ELAM is a very powerful tool. And in fact, it's a favorite tool of Cisco support engineers when troubleshooting networking issues. Next, let's talk about some of the limitations of the ELAM. So one of the downsides of using the ELAM is you must directly connect to that specific switch to run an ELAM packet capture. So if I wanted to run an ELAM capture on all these three switches, I would need to open up three separate PuTTY sessions, one to each individual switch. Another downside of the ELAM is it's tricky to use and it is not user friendly. In fact, it is typically very difficult to kind of comprehend what you're doing when you're typing out ELAM commands. And because of this, the ELAM CLI is not supported for customer use. So to overcome the limitations of the ELAM, you can use something called the ELAM Assistant. Now to use the ELAM Assistant, you upload it and install it on the APIC. And remember, the APIC has visibility across all of the Nexus 9000 switches. And because of this, a benefit of the ELAM Assistant is we now have just one place to run all our ELAM captures from, the APIC. So if I wanna run an ELAM capture on LEAF 101, I do it from the ELAM Assistant on the APIC. If I wanna run ELAM captures on the other switches, I do it from the ELAM Assistant on the APIC. Another benefit of the ELAM Assistant is it's easy to use. It's much easier to use than the ELAM CLI. And because of this, it's supported for customers to use. So let's go over the scenario we're gonna be troubleshooting. So we're gonna have a web server that's behind LEAF 101. We're gonna have an app server that's behind LEAF 102. And right now the web server cannot SSH into the app server. So we're gonna troubleshoot this issue in six simple steps. Step number one, we'll download the ELAM Assistant software. Step number two will then upload the Elam Assistant software to the APIC and install it. Step number three will create a capture using the Elam Assistant. We'll configure the Elam Assistant to capture SSH traffic on LEAF 101. Step number four will then send SSH traffic into LEAF 101. Step number five will then view the Elam capture report to see what the switch is doing with the traffic. And finally, in step six, we'll attempt to resolve the issue. Okay, so let's go to step number one and we're gonna download the Elam Assistant by searching Google. Let's click the first link. Let's click the download button. Click agree and download. We'll save the file into the downloads directory. Okay, we're gonna move on to step number two. We'll upload the Elam Assistant to the APIC and install it. So let's click on apps and then we'll go to this little button here that says add application. We'll click it. I'll click browse. I'll go to the downloads directory. I'll select the Elam Assistant file and I'll open it. And then we'll submit it to upload the file to the APIC. Okay, so notice the Elam Assistant is installing. Next, let's enable the Elam Assistant. Okay, let's open it. And here we go, here's the Elam Assistant. Uh, let's go ahead and initialize it. So it's initialized. And that's gonna take us to step number three. We'll create a capture using the Elam Assistant we'll set it to capture the web server's SSH traffic on LEAF 101. So let's actually see the issue in the lab first. So notice the web server can ping the app server, but it cannot SSH into the app server. So to troubleshoot the issue, let's go back to the Elam Assistant. We're gonna select Capture, click Add Node. We're going to select Node 101. Next, let's click the Parameters plus sign. And here are all of the filters you can use to capture the appropriate traffic. So notice we can capture traffic via source, destination, MAC address. We can use source, destination, IP addresses. We can use port, all that good stuff. Now it's important to note that Elam will only capture one packet at a time. And this might seem like a pretty big limitation, 
but typically you're only going to need to capture one packet to determine what the switch is actually doing with the traffic. So we are going to set the ELAM to capture traffic destined to port 22, which is the port used for SSH. So I'm going to select destination port and I'll type in port 22. Let's also add the source IP of the web server that's sending the SSH traffic. So I'll click the parameters plus site again. This time I'm going to select source IP and I'm going to put in the IP address of the web server, which is 10.0.1.1. Okay, so if we look at our capture, what I'm saying is any SSH traffic from the web server's IP address will be captured by LEAF 101. Next, let's click the set ELAM button. Okay, notice the ELAM capture on LEAF 101 is in a set status. Uh, this means that the ELAM capture just got created on LEAF 101. So currently, LEAF 101's ELAM is listening for SSH traffic sent from the web server. And that takes us to step number four. We'll now send SSH traffic into LEAF 101 from our web server. Okay, let's send SSH traffic. I hit enter. It's going to fail as expected. Let's go back to the ELAM assistant. And to see if LEAF 101 captured the packet, we're going to click the check trigger button. Boom, there we go. We're generating a report and the report's ready. So we do have an ELAM capture for LEAF 101. And that takes us to step number five. Let's read the ELAM report to see what LEAF 101 is doing with the packet. So let's click on report ready. We then scroll down and we can see all of this amazing information about the SSH packet. So we can see the MAC addresses right here of the app and web servers. We can also see the server's IP addresses as well. And if we go a little farther down, we can see the traffic's being sent to destination port 22. Let's continue to move down the ELAM report. This part of the ELAM report, we can see LEAF 101's forwarding decision. We can actually see that there is a drop due to a contract. So to understand what's going on here, we need to quickly talk about contracts in ACI. By default, different types of servers in ACI are not allowed to communicate to each other. To enable communication, you apply a contract in between different types of servers. So you can kind of think of contracts as like the ACLs of ACI. So to allow the web servers to send SSH traffic to the app servers, I would need to create a contract that permits traffic destined to port 22. I would then need to apply the contract to the web server and the app server groups. So that is what our configuration should be. But according to the Elam report, the SSH traffic is being dropped due to a contract issue. So there is likely something wrong with my contract configuration. So that takes us to step number six. We'll attempt to fix the issue. So let's go look at the contract that is applied in between my web and app servers. So to check the contracts, I go to tenants. I'm gonna click on the sales tenant. I then expand contracts, expand standard, and I select the web services contract. I then click the topology tab. So notice here I can see the contract is applied between our app and our web servers. And if I hover over the contract with my mouse, I can see the type of traffic that's being permitted in between the web and the app servers. Notice down there you can see the different ports that are being opened up. So I want you to take a look here and I want you to tell me what is wrong with the traffic being permitted here. Why isn't the SSH traffic working between the web and app servers? Feel free to pause this video to see if you can figure it out. So notice source port 22 is being permitted instead of destination port 22. So let's talk about what's going on here. So inside of the contract, we accidentally permitted traffic sourced from port 22. But when the web server attempts to SSH into the app server, it sends traffic destined to port 22. And when the ACI switches receive the traffic, they say, hey, traffic destined to port 22 is not allowed. Only traffic sourced from port 22 is allowed. And because of this, the traffic is dropped. So if we look at the contract again, notice there's a basic filter. That's where we configure port 22. So to resolve the issue, we're gonna go into the basic filter, which is again, part of our contract. So I'm gonna expand filters. I'm gonna select basic filter. And from here, I'm gonna click this filter entry. I'm gonna change the source port from SSH to unspecified. And I'm gonna change that to the destination port. I'm gonna set that to port 22. We cl then click update. Click continue. Okay, so we just properly configured our contract to permit traffic destined to port 22. So let's now try to SSH into the app server. Okay, here we go. Is it going to work? Boom, there we go. Let's put in the password. Okay, we just successfully SSH'd into the app server. 
Okay, so just a quick recap. We just troubleshot an issue by using the Elam Assistant. We learned Leaf 101 was dropping the traffic due to a contract drop, and that assisted us in resolving the issue. Very cool stuff. So the Elam Assistant is an amazing and highly effective network troubleshooting tool. It enables you to isolate and troubleshoot difficult to resolve networking issues. So I encourage you to install it on your APIC. And the good thing is, is the Elam Assistant, it is not service impacting. So you can actually use it in a production environment. Now, if you want to learn more about ACI and the Elam Assistant, you can go to uh, Cisco U. So just go to u.cisco.com. Uh, one of the courses that we cover the uh, Elam Assistant in is in the DC ACIO course. Now, outside of Cisco U, I do teach an instructor-led training called Cisco Operations and Troubleshooting Bootcamp for ACI. Uh, it's multiple weeks of training. So if you really want to learn ACI, I highly recommend this course. Uh, we also do cover the Elam and the Elam Assistant, and we show you how to use it to troubleshoot. If you're interested in more information in the course, I'll include a link to the course in the show notes. Also, if you like this video and want to see more of these videos in the future, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. All right, that's all I got. I hope this was useful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you.